Hi everybody, welcome to Footy Wire 2024. Absolute exciting time. Um, obviously, last year was won by myself, Christos. Gators bitches who defeated Bubbles forever in the final. Smashed him actually, but you know, that's okay. But anyway, let's have a recap of this year's draft. Uh, another season, who knows? Hopefully we can get a, a new winner. Um, I won my fourth last year. Tyman with Fennec, who's also on four. Uh, Stiff is the leader who's won it five times. Uh, Mix won it once, and no one else in this competition has actually won it. So you guys need to get a move on. Regardless, uh, let's get on to the draft. So the retained players last year, uh, Bont was the best player in the game. It was retained by myself. Uh, Dacos by Fennec. English was retained by Bombers Forever. Max Gorn was retained by Pundas Paradise. Toby Green by Renegades. Errol Goulin by Gods of Olympus. Um, Clay Oliver, who a bit of a risky one there by Second Destroy, but he will be available round one, so that's pretty good for him. Um, Caleb Sarong was retained by Sugar Daddies. And then Tim Taranto by Renegades. And Jared Witts was retained by Top Guns. So then that brings us to the draft. And uh, obviously we had the Australian Guineas and went by the finish in that and who got what. And Fennec ended up getting... Pick one. Uh, so with pick one, Fenny chose Tom Green. Pick two, Tom Stewart went to uh, Bombers Forever. Pick three did go to Top Guns. However, they were in a trade um, with Hunter's Paradise or Hunter's Paddock, whatever his name is. Um, doesn't matter. He's irrelevant in this competition anyway. So Hunter's Paddock traded um, Rory Laird and Noah Anderson, who was picked with picks 10 and 11, for Jordan Dawson and Connor Rosie. Um, so that trade happened. And then with the th fourth pick, Charlie Kerno went to Gators Bitches. Uh, Andrew Brayshaw went before Christian Petrarca. So Andrew Brayshaw was done by Second Destroy and Christian Petrarca by Sugar Daddies. James Sicily was um, drafted by Gods of Olympus. Zach Merritt by Renegades. Riley O'Brien uh, um, was drafted by Rangers and Imus, so Redhead sticking together there, which is fantastic. And obviously, Rory Laird, um, as we mentioned before, was part of that trade with Jordan Dawson. Um, and then, I mean, there's obviously a few good players out there. Jeremy Cameron went to Rangers and Anonymous. Sean Darcy, who unfortunately is going to miss about you know, six weeks or so, um, was drafted pretty early as well. Um, a few good players there. A couple of halfbacks was couple of halfbacks, a couple of tacklers. Took Miller, went number one last year by Maltese Falcons. He's got him again with pick 20 um, this year. Taylor Walker, is he going to have another good year? Who knows? Interesting one here. Uh, Joe Danaher went before Nick Larkey. Nick Larkey realistically probably was the best ball last year. Didn't have those big bags against West Coast or North Melbourne, which uh, Charlie Kerner or Taylor Walker did. They still kicked 71 goals. Better side this year. So, you know, second destroy getting Joe Danaher sticking to his uh, old Essendon theme. It's seen there. And then, obviously, we go on. Last year's Brownlow Millers, Lockie Neal by Rangers Anonymous, pick 32, a bit late. Sha Bol Shay Bolden, pick 34, should be having a pretty good year. Um, Dusty, who may be injured already uh, by Top Guns, at, uh, pick 38. And then we obviously got a few good players there. Zach Butters, going to have another good year. Um, Max King went pick 44. Um, Tom Hawkins went pick 47. Kyle Lungford's an interesting one. Is he going to have another good year? He kicked a lot of goals last year, but will he do the same? Who knows? I mean, Bombers should be a bit better, but we don't know, do we? Um, and then, obviously, we've got the, all the, you know, a few other players. A couple of tacklers there in Tom Atkins and James Robot at 51 and 52. Jack Vaughan went at 50. I think that was a stage where everyone wanted a few tacklers. A couple of halfbacks in Blakey, Whitfield, Wilkie, Ridley, Short, all went there together, and the, and the one from picks 53 to pick 57. Um, and then Patrick Cripps, pick 60, interesting one. Uh, but pretty late, uh, you think. Could have gone a bit earlier. Um, Jack Lacocious, Christian Cherry, Hayden Young. So a few, a few good players here, like one, of the, like one of the premiers last year, Josh Kelly. Went, went pick there. Um... Nick Martin's playing a new role. Tom Lynch is injured. We'll see what happens. But he went. Um, he got picked just before, after Oscar Allen. Oscar Allen, you know, hopefully West Coast a bit better. Should have a pretty good year, you would think. 
Ollie Wise is an interesting one. He was part of the Premiership team last year um, for Gators Pitchers, and obviously last year's finalist. Must have seen him playing pretty good on the bench, so you picked him up in Bombers Forever. Uh, who also picked up Nat Fife. So, you know, going all out there. Um, and then, yeah, just a few different ones. You know, ranking. Hopefully he doesn't get injured, according to Stiff, because he's losing players. George Wardlaw went there, shoot his second year. Good tackler, so we'll see what happens with him there. Um, and then just obviously as we get to the drinks and the, I mean, the most crucial time of the draft, we all think you get those players that could be near the comp between picks 8 and picks 12, 13. Um, so is everyone there going to have a good year? Sam Flanders might be all right. I mean, Luke Jackson's already going to step up now that Sean Darcy's gone. Um, I picked up Callum Mills, a bit risky because he's out for a few for a few weeks. Um, perhaps it could have been like a few other players that were left in the draft who might be able to pick up a bit later as well. Um, Josh Dacos, last year's Copeland Trophy winner, he got picked up pick 110. He's pretty consistent. Finn Callahan, pick I like. Um, I reckon he'll have a good year this year. Pick 112. Um, you yeah, know, top, top guns had to go for Luke Parker. That was always going to happen, wasn't it? Um, what else we got? James Jordan, new team. Should have a good year, you would think. Max Holm gone to the back line. Um, so, you know, on the practice matches, he picked up a few possessions. So his Gators is going to be happy with that. Jake Lloyd went very late. He went to pick 123. He used to be one of the best halfbacks. So interesting to see what happened with that. Um, this very controversial, uh, a, few tears were, a few tears were done when Harley Reid got picked up um, by Rangers Anonymous. Michael wasn't happy about that one. And then, um, yeah, Dylan Moore stuck with the Gators. Go Gators. You know, he's going to stick with us because he's recorded him saying go Gators. So he will stay with us all the time. And then we just get to the end of the – Paddy Dangerfield went 151, almost at the end. Mick wants to bring Sexy back because Dimmer's put him in the back line. And, you know, in a practice match, he got like about 20 kicks. So that could be an interesting move there. Sam Burry, is he going to play? Mm, don't know. Zach Williams, bit of a risk, but he's going to play round one. So Fennig will be happy with that. And then um, – as we get to the end of the draft, everyone was just trying to think who the pick, get your backup racks, get your, maybe a small forward, someone from your team, like I did with Con McKenzie or Cam McKenzie. And the last pick of the draft was Lockie Schultz. So all in all, you know, I think everyone was pretty happy with the teams, I think. Uh, we don't know, but, you know, we'll see what happens. As you can tell, with the, with the draft, um, who didn't get picked up. So a lot, of, as I said, a lot of players are still left on the board. The available players, as we mentioned, I mean, Caleb Daniel, he might get benched. Um, Cam Guthrie out for 10 weeks, so he might be a mid-season pickup. Another player, Blitzfast was there. Um, Mocky Weller, Maynard, Josh Simkin, he'll probably be a mid-season pickup. Um, who else we got? Still a style bottom state there. Daniel Rioli, Keys, um, you know, Dion Prestia, another mid-season pickup. Even even Jamin Impey might be. Harold Himmelberg, back line, might be all right. Um Zach Bailey, Jaeger O'Meara, you know, guys have been picked up all pretty much most years. Uh, interesting with um, West Coast, with with West Coast, that's Michigan, but West Coast, um, Jack Darlin didn't get picked up, which was interesting. So people look for forwards, but no one wanted Jack Darlin this year. So maybe they think West Coast aren't going to score any goals. And then a couple other players that weren't picked up there. Um, Matt Flynn, another mid-season pickup most likely because he'll be the number one ruck for Eagles if he, if he gets fit. Tanner Bruin, he got a few tackles last year. He wasn't too bad. Second year in the Geelong midfield, you think he'll be better. Liam Henry, a new team in St Kilda, didn't get picked up. So there's a few players that didn't get picked up. Um, you know, it's interesting to see if, if, who goes. But it looks like there's a lot of options in the mid-season draft, which will be good um, with that. So pretty good. Let's go to this week's matchups. All right, so if we look at this week's matchups, so a lot of people don't have plays this week. So a lot of people are going to be short because of round zero with only four teams playing. Um, so the games this week are Sydney play Collingwood at um, – where is it? Sydney play Collingwood um, – Sydney play Melbourne. Bad news, sorry. Sydney play Melbourne, 7.30 Thursday. On Friday at 7.40 lockout is Lions versus Carlton. Then Saturday, 4.20 lockout is the Suns versus Tigers. And then 
Uh, Saturday night, 7.30 lockout is the Giants versus the Collingwood. And obviously, as we can tell, all the teams that have the bye this week. Um, and Yeah, so our fixture, if we look at our matchups now, um, this week, we've got the first, we'll go, since I'm my thing out, let's go first with me. Uh, Sugar Daddies versus Gators Bitches. Projections don't mean a thing because they're last year's projections and who knows, they're oh, my team's getting 385, my team's getting 386, my getting whatever. They're last year. It's a different year. Calm down. Relax. We don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, as you can tell, uh, for this week, Sugar Daddies have got no one, really. They've got no one available there on the bench either. Um, no one looks like they can. Sam Walsh isn't playing. And all the other guys are not playing this week. So, look, it's going to go one way, obviously, Realistically, Gators bitches should win. Um, that's just the way it is. So, full forwards, Jesse Hogan, Joel Arnie, Christian Petrarca, half forward, or utility. So, Jesse Hogan's a half forward. Christian Petrarca's a utility. Ben Zainsworth is a midfield. Lockie Ash is a halfback. And Matt Rowell as a tackler. Um, are you better off putting players in different positions to get more out of it? I don't know. It's up to him. Uh, for me, I've pretty much got a full team to choose from. Um, Armini is a full forward. Kurdo is a half forward. Jordan to go is utility. Grundy Ruckman, Mitchell midfield, short follower. Harris Andrews is a halfback. They've got Laddams as tacklers, but I am going to play Luke Paul with Zorko because he plays on the Friday night. So you know, the guys that are playing on Thursday night is Grundy and Armini. I'll just leave them there, see how that goes, um, which means I might need to take Penny Laddams out, actually. Maybe I'll play Peter. Maybe I'll play Peter Adams as a, as an interchange and see what happens. Uh, either way, either way. Um, and Sugar, just so everyone knows, you got plenty of loopholes here, so you can put a player in a interchange position um, and see what their best score will be in what position to play them in that in that spot if you're able to do so. That way, you can try to get as many points as you want. Because remember, at the end of the year. It is points four that makes it that separates you on the ladder if you're tied in the same amount of points as someone else in terms of game points, games won. Uh, next game, Rangers Anonymous. Ken hasn't done his 10 yet, but Bombers Forever has. He's got Rainer Utility, Sparrow Midfield, Dawson uh, Follower, and K- uh, Kitty and Colby. Kitty Coleman has a half back. Uh, no one else really available there to choose from, as we can see. Um, with Kenna, who can Kenna cho- choose from? He's got a few Richmond guys, as we know, but he's going to have um, Charlie Cameron to choose from this week. He's going to have uh, Lockie Neal, Nick Vlosten. He will have Darcy Moore, Jacob Hopper, Hugh McCluggage, Tim Taranto, um, James Rowbottom, um, and Aaron Cadman. If or selected, of course. So Kenna will have a full. Should looks like he will have a full team this week. So you would think Kenna's going to win that right, that game. God deliver us, seek and destroy. Both players have done the team. Both players have got. They can actually put a full list out with a full eight players in there as well. So Hitwood uh, versus Danaher. I think Danaher will win that one. Bolton versus Lacocious. Interesting one. I mean, Bolton can kick zero goals six in a game and frustrate the hell out of you. Lacocious looks like he's like they're only full. Jed Walters not there yet. So we'll see what happens. Um, Errol Goulden is utility and Clayton Oliver. All the averages almost very similar. Errol Goulden finished the season off great last year. If you look at his projections against these players as well last year. He killed it. We've got over 100 utility. Uh, Big O versus Naismith. Interesting. Naismith's uh, first game back. He will be up against Jared Witts. So it'll be a tough one for his first senior game back in how many years. But good, good story of good story, of course. Anyway, uh, Lipinski played well in the practice match against George Hewitt. Lockie Whitfield and Flanders as follows. Sexton and Powers are halfback. That's an interesting one with Sexton. Um, Dimmers looks like he's bringing Sexy back. So we'll see what happens. And then Matt Crouch and Darcy Cameron there as well. They've got interchange players. Love at Donald and Salem. They both play the Thursday night. So see what they loophole there. Top Gums and Renegades. Uh, Top Guns, by the way, apparently Brody Milicek's available for trade if anyone wants to pick up Brody Milicek. You got Papley. Dusty, is he going to play? It looks like he may miss. Um, versus Toby Green. Green's just an absolute gun. Uh, Noah Anderson versus Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly uh, was great for me last year. Um, 
Jared Witts and just Tom DeCone and Jared Witts getting sent an ace move, so there's probably 50 hit outs here for Jared Witts. Uh, Doherty versus Akers. Pendlebury was another one who was under a bit of injury cloud, so we're not sure what's going on there. Noel Bolter as a follower is an interesting one. Um, yeah. And what do they play? They play on the Saturday. Colin will play there as well. These guys all play Saturday night. So maybe he need, yeah, he's got Dunkley to change, so probably Dunkley's gonna go in there. Um then Jake Law is a halfback and Isaac Heaney is a tackler. No room for him to change play there. Doesn't look like there is anyone else available for either of those players at this stage. Uh no, it doesn't. And then uh last game look at Pundas Panic versus Maltese Falcons. Uh, you know, Pundas Panic, the all time points for champion, according to him. He's got Ben King versus Mackay, Schultz versus Warner, Vaughn and Green. Could be a good one there. Gordon and Briggs, Hunter and Dacos. So he's got Hunter. Tells me he's a bit short in players. Dacos and Miller, Newman and May, Elliott and Cripps. And then they both got an interchange player in Jordan and Fritz. James Jordan will be interested to see how it goes this year in his new role. In the practice matches, he played really, really well. Uh, anyone else to choose from? Uh... Doesn't look like there is anyone else to choose from there for either team, to be honest. So it looks like it looks like everyone's or well, Jack Crisp is the one to play as well. So um, it looks like he is not being chosen at all. Jack Crisp will miss out. So Phoenix the only one who has the extra players there, and Zach Blooms as well is playing. So um, interesting one there. So all in all, good luck this year, everyone. Hopefully, it's a good one. Teams, I think the teams are only, uh, only been announced the day before this year or something. I'm not too sure. It is rolling lockouts. You do have the interchange loophole available every game as well. Good luck to all. I hope everyone does well. Um, just remember, I am your current champion, and I'm organising a gift for everyone. See ya, and have a great day. Good luck.